So you want to build a beautiful bioactive terrarium. You spend months thinking about what animal's going to go in it. You spend weeks picking the absolute perfect terrarium. You make sure you have a good substrate. You set up a perfect misting schedule. You order your plants, make sure they're beautiful. But four months later, they kind of look like this. Did you forget about maybe the most important thing when it comes to growing plants in a terrarium? The lighting. Hey, bud. So, what are you doing, man? We're supposed to be shooting the lighting and par video. Yeah, par. No, reptile lighting. No, golf. No, par. Photosynthetically active radiation. So not par. Dude, I was really gonna do good today, too. Here at our friend Hillary's house, she has one of the absolute best houseplant collections I have ever seen. It really is like a jungle in here. But key to picking which plants to grow is how much available light there is to grow your plants. Here in Hillary's living room, it's much more indirect light, just this one window, and it gets filtered through the day. And that's really good for certain plant species. But here in Hillary's sunroom, there's both skylights and windows, which allows plants that need tons of light to flourish. Here back in the Leap Lab, we don't have the luxury of having tons of natural sunlight to provide to our animals. Or our plants. Right, but what we do have is the ability to add artificial light, like this one, to make sure that everything stays healthy and happy. But how do we know what type of artificial light we want to use, and are all lights the same? So you might think that since plants themselves are a bright green color, they might like mostly green light to grow. Or maybe, You've seen lights that are this color, that are marketed as plant grow lights, and they put off this color and claim to grow your plants bigger and stronger. Or maybe you've seen white light and think that pure white light's the way to go for growing healthy terrarium plants. Well, if you thought any of these things, you're not wrong. But as usual, and always with everything to do with reptile, amphibian, and plant keeping, it's a bit more complicated than that. Par. Or? photosynthetically active radiation. But what does that really mean? You may remember from our video on the spectrum of sunlight and how to read a spectrograph that there are three main parts of light that we receive from the sun here on the surface of the earth. Ultraviolet or UV, visible, and infrared or IR. PAR is the part of the spectrum that plants need to photosynthesize and live happily and it happens to be the part of the spectrum that we can also see, which is the visible spectrum. Now what is interesting is that the plants use different colors and therefore different wavelengths differently. Plants that like shade or filtered indirect light, like this bromeliad here, are so used to growing on the forest floor and in light that has had the green light removed from the canopy above it, that they prefer a little bit more red and blue light and because of that filtered light, a much lower par amount. There's actually a lot of similarities between the reptile hobby that we know and love and the aquarium hobby. Just like plants inside of our terrariums, corals found in a saltwater aquarium or aquatic plants found in a freshwater aquarium need a lot of light in order to grow. But how much light do they need and what kind of light? Well, corals come from the open ocean and they get tons and tons of light. They're plastered in light all day long. Whereas plants that are living in a river don't get nearly as much light because of the overshadowing from trees nearby. So how do we know how much light we need? Well, we use a device known as a PAR meter. And using a sensor below the lighting itself, we're able to measure with a unit known as PAR, or micromoles per meter squared of photons. So we know that plants and animals need the sun to grow. And we know that the sun is way stronger than any man-made lights. So all we need to do is turn up the light and therefore increase the par, right? Not quite. See, just like these lights are uncomfortably bright for me right now, too much light can be blinding for your animals and it can damage your plants. 
In fact, it can cause your plants to wither and die and your animals to have eye issues. <sighs> Finding the right balance between not enough and too much light is incredibly important in your bioactive terrarium. You definitely want to do your research. You need to find out exactly how much PAR, and therefore light, the specific species of plants and animals that you keep need to make sure that you can find lights to fit that need. So let's talk about the lights themselves. In the past five or 10 years, LED fixtures like these have become incredibly popular for use in both aquariums and now most recently in the reptile world. First, they offer an amazing amount of light output for the size that they are and how much they cost. Before LED, we had to use lots and lots of expensive fluorescent lights to get the same amount of PAR that much fewer LEDs can provide. Not only are they about the same price for the light itself as the old technology was, for more output, they're also much cheaper to run in the long time. LEDs, because of their design, use way less energy than old school lighting technologies, making them a much more cost-effective way to keep our reptiles. And you never have to buy a bulb again. But what LED lights do we want specifically for our terrariums? Remember how we said that different plants like different colors or parts of the solar spectrum? This is why we think it's a really good idea to buy a light like this one for your terrarium that has light that has a lot of that visible spectrum in its color. White light, here in the center, is actually a mix of three different colors, red, blue, and green. So a good strong LED that has a mix of these colors and they're mixed well, will give you that perfect white light. Now, a great way to test this is to look at the spectrograph of the light you're interested in buying. If you see that nice spread of colors in the spectrograph, and ideally they match what the sunlight puts out, you know you're looking at a good light for growing plants and keeping your animals healthy. But another important test you can do is to make sure that the output apart from the light matches the par needs of the plants you have in your terrarium. By both reviewing the spectrum of lights that you want to use and making sure that you use the right amount of par for the plants and animals that you keep, you'll be able to have a bioactive planted terrarium that'll thrive and grow into a mini jungle. But reptile lighting doesn't end there. A lot of lights that are designed to grow plants are marketed as full spectrum or full spectrum grow lights. But this is only half true. While they may cover the full spectrum of light that's visible to humans, they could be missing two very important parts of the natural solar spectrum that are vital to the health of any reptiles we keep, UV and IR. UV especially is a really hot topic in the reptile world right now, especially with these new LED UVB fixtures that are starting to hit the market. Make sure to watch our upcoming video on reptile UV lighting, where we talk about the UV requirements of our fantastic animals and different ways that we can provide it to make sure we have happy, healthy terrariums.